a romantic tryst in the cards for Valentine's Day. They were supposed to exchange Valentine's, uh, make out like teenagers. A married couple planned a rendezvous on a winter night in a lonely rural Georgia park. But for Stacy and Richard Sheck, it would be the bloodiest of Valentines. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh my God, please, I need help right now. Piercing the dark sky, Stacy Sheck's blood curdling screams to 911. On this night, there would be no box of chocolates, no flowers waiting for Stacy, only the bullet ridden body of her husband, Richard, lying on the ground beside his truck. He's been what? Was it a random shooting or was something more sordid at play? And what you look at in that situation is that is either a personal thing, somebody really hates him and wants him dead, or it's professional. The burning question, who on earth would want Richard Sheck, a loving husband and father, dead? And why? Everyone knew the Shecks were in love, and for Stacy, apparently in love with love itself, Richard was her fifth husband. I don't know why she had so many husbands. When Stacy would get bored, it was on to the next. Five times the charm, Stacy's cousin Connie recalls Richard was the best in her stable of husbands. In fact, he even adopted two of Stacy's three sons. Richard was a great father to them. He brought a lot to the table when it came to the marriage. The 46-year-old had a passion for hot air ballooning, but most of all, he loved scouting and was a den leader for his boys' Cub Scout troop. Richard was this uh, uh, gregarious, just outgoing guy. Uh, he always looked to include everyone in the room into what we were doing. Stacy, the breadwinner for the family, worked as a head administrator for a large medical and surgical practice in DeKalb County, Georgia. She would work her butt off to make sure that her kids had everything that they wanted and needed. But there was always time for love. On the last night of Richard's life, he was cooking Valentine's Day dinner for Stacy and her grandparents, an elderly couple who required round-the-clock medical attention. Uh, at that point, Stacy and Richard had Valentine's to exchange for each other, gifts and cards. Uh, she made the, the decision that they would exchange them in the park. She told him to go ahead and meet her there because the nurse that was relieving her was late. And so she sent Richard ahead and told him to wait on her there. They made their way in separate cars along the dark and winding road. Richard arrived first, but as it turns out, he was not alone. Someone else was there, lurking in the shadows. It's a very secluded place. There was no pavement. There was no lights. And so it's, it's a very eerie place, especially at night. And eerie was about to turn deadly. 30 minutes later, Stacy pulls up and sees Richard's body punctured with bullets lying in blood and dirt. Two to the abdomen and one to the chest, and then two to the face, which is overkill. When cops arrive on scene, they quickly rule out robbery as a motive. When we searched his truck, we found there was $40 in the center console. His watch was on, his wedding ring was on, his wallet was on him. If it were a robbery, then there was about a $40,000 truck sitting there idling that they could have jumped in and taken. One of the first to the scene, Lieutenant Dan Franklin, says from the get-go, something just didn't smell right. Basically, red flags are the best way to put it. The shooting appeared to be too over the top to be random. Richard's just a regular guy who's unarmed, and he gets there, and he's comfortable enough to get out of his truck and approach the person who ultimately shot him to death. And in the darkened night, the mystery killer is already gone by the time Stacy says she arrived at the secluded spot. Detectives scour the crime scene for evidence, but there isn't much to go on. Suddenly, with police spotlights trained on the crime scene, soft dirt that absorbed Richard's blood seems to speak volumes to investigators, telling a chilling story. The soil at the scene was soft, it was muddy, and it was very conducive to preserving tire impressions. There, imprinted in the wet soil, were three sets of tire tracks. We determined we saw Richard's impressions, 
we saw the impressions that Stacy's Ford Explorer made, but there was a third set of impressions uh, that came in from the park. You could follow them from, from the road. So that told us that the vehicle that left those impressions was there before Richard got there and then left, presumably after he was dead. Cops believe the tire tracks had to be those of the killer, but matching them to a getaway car would be like finding a needle in a haystack, or would it? Before cops can worry about how to make a match, a frantic Stacy makes a shocking admission. Before we left the scene, she started telling us about an affair that she'd been having with a guy named Juan Reyes. You heard right. Stacy was two-timing Richard with her own Don Juan, which she tearfully brings up again during an interview with authorities. I am in, you know, I'm in deep with Juan. In deep is an understatement. Investigators quickly learned Stacy had been carrying on an affair with her Latin lover for a long time. And that affair had been going on for several years. Immediately that sparked our attention and got us looking at Juan as a prime suspect. And it turns out their suspect was close, working directly in Stacy's own office. Despite the fact he had no medical experience, she hired Juan as a surgical assistant at the clinic she ran. She tells cops Juan had previously worked as a security guard at a swanky hotel. So please, I mean, I don't know anything about how this happened. Okay, all right. It all appears to be a classic crime of passion. A jealous boyfriend wants Stacy's husband out of the picture. When we asked her if she thought Juan was responsible, she'd say she didn't want to think that he was responsible, but she didn't know. Up next, detectives put the surgical assistant under the microscope. Juan became our primary suspect at that point. But is he the trigger man caught in a love triangle? Or is another secret about to emerge from the dark woods of the Georgia Park?